Welcome to Dairy Robot Radio, the show that provides answers to your most pressing questions about dairy farming and automation. Each episode will focus on a major topic within the dairy industry and will feature experts throughout our industry and within Laylee to help provide information and different perspectives on automation. And now here's your host, Preston Vincent. Welcome back to Dairy Robot Radio. This is Preston Vincent and I'm sitting in the beautiful eastern Idaho in the Magic Valley and uh, at Hegla Creek Dairy and I'd like to introduce you to Austin Hyde, the uh, herd manager at Hegla Creek Dairy as we embark on a bit of a conversation regarding some super cows at uh, Hegla Creek Dairy and some performance that we've been seeing um, at this dairy that has been now milking with robotics for almost a year. They started up last December 12th in uh, 2018 and uh, so they've gone through a bit of uh, the first year learnings things like that and it's really exciting to see some of the performance of some of these individual cows as they embark on their second lactation in the barn and uh, so that's what I'm here to do. Um, I'll introduce you to Austin Hyde and let him uh, uh, introduce himself. So like you said, I'm Austin Hyde. I grew up in Las Cruces, New Mexico on a, a dairy there. We milked about 4,000 cows. Um, made my way up towards uh, Idaho when, when these guys were looking for somebody to run their herd. I, I thought that would be a good fit and it was nice because they were putting in their robotic barn and just was excited to learn something new. Perfect. So Austin, how long have you been at uh, Hegler Creek? So I've been here for two and a half years now. Okay, and so one year at the robots and a year and a half before that as they were planning and doing that, you were? Yep, work at their maternity barn and manage the feed yard, so all the awesome. feed. Awesome, so you've learned quite a bit in the first year, I bet. Oh yeah, yep, it's been interesting, really fun to, to learn it all and kind of get my hands on everything, it's been fun. Well yeah, so the, the theme of today's discussion is, is regarding these, as we call them at Laley, super cows, these cows that have a lot of individual talents. Their genetics are, are, are uh, embedded within them. And now within a robotic technology, we know that we can get those genetics to express themselves. And so just working with you and working with some of the FMS folks at Laylee, we've uh, heard wind of some of these cows that are uh, averaging over 175 pounds a day, but it actually have had days where they've been over 200 pounds. Um, what do you think about these cows that have been able to experience this type of production? No, oh, it's amazing. I think it's funny because we set our feed table to to max out at 200 pounds. Now we have to rethink the way we're feeding them. We've got to add some more more feed at the robots. So it's it's fun to see all these cows do what they're made to do. Excellent. Yeah, it's it's neat when you uh, set set some goals out and then a cow. Over, uh, overrides that goal and does, does exactly what she wants to do and then you got to rethink it and say okay well now we got to set the goal even, even further. Um, but yeah so like I said it's the theme of this discussion. Uh, what we'll do is uh, go through a couple individual cows here at Hegla Creek and to speak a little bit about it because I know in my travels around the country we have a lot of questions about you know well 175 to 200 pound cow how many times does she visit the robot? How, what's her milk speed? What's her box time? And you know, what, what is the limit? Is there a limit? So uh, we'll go through a couple of those uh, individuals and, uh, and we'll also be able to compare to what they did the previous lactation to give a bit of perspective. Because every cow here at Hegla Creek, whether it be a first, second, third, or fourth lactation that came into the robots last year, you know, used, used last year as sort of a training year to get implemented, to get adapted to the, you know, the robot going on her free, free will, own free will, uh, getting fed differently and so on and so forth. So uh, when we get into the discussion, knowing that the, uh, every animal had their training year last year, what are some of the things that you do now with a cow that had a lactation in the robots? Kind of go through her her, her uh, steps in her lactation to bring her back into the robots for the second time. So they're calving in and then within five, five days we're bringing them up to the robots and getting them into the separation rooms where they can just kind of relax and settle back into the robots. But 
usually it's taken them about two days to figure it out the robots again and just kind of get acclimated back into the the robots and then we're just kicking them out to the general population and they're we don't ever see them again until we breed them because they they just take off there's no issues with them it I mean, it's been amazing how fast they get they transition there's almost not there's almost not a transition period anymore to those cows so you, you, you in the first time they were here they got trained at a robot now the second time you're giving them two days so just to get acclimated get their feet under them a bit yeah. realize they're back into that spot yeah. to where they were and and then they're not ending up on the fetch list or anything like that are they they're just off and going yeah, and they're just off and going and I mean it's it's nice that I mean, we probably look at them a little bit too long because we, we're just not used to seeing cows that come in and just take off and milk like they were on their last lactation, just don't even skip a beat, really. Great. Well, we'll give an example um, of a couple cows here at Hegler Creek uh, that are uh, performing at this, this level. One cow, it's in her second lactation. She's 62 days in milk this lactation. Her number is 8289. Right now she's averaging 175 pounds a day uh, so far in her lactation, but she's actually had, I think, two days that she was at 200. Um, and it's a, a cow that's special in a way because in her first lactation, in the 305 average, she was a 29,000 pound two-year-old. So genetically a, a really good animal as a two-year-old. And now in her second lactation, albeit that it's only 62 days in milk, her predictive 305 average is, is 44,000 pounds. So we know there's a lot of lactation to go for her yet, and she's got a lot of proven of herself to do. But so far, she's, she's producing at a rate that's well, well above what she was at as a two-year-old. Um, and it's exciting to see where she can go. She's a cow that averages, she's got a, just a milk speed at six and a half, so not an elite milk speed cow. But she's milking 4.7 times, because like had Austin had mentioned, her, uh, the milk access allows her to come. So she's milking 4.7 times, averaging 37 and a half pounds every time she gets milked. And um, off to the races she goes. And so it's gonna be really interesting to see. But when we talk super cows, that's the kind of jump we're expecting and wanting to see is a cow really push herself from lactation to lactation to go from a 30,000 pound cow to go even further because here at Hegler Creek there is a big focus put on genetics and breeding for that and now with the robots it's allowing some of that that uh, uh, genetic expression to occur. So is there anything specific that you might know about that cow individually or is she just out in the barn on her own? And well, Those kind of cows you try to ignore because when you start putting too much focus on them you're <laughs> it's usually when something goes wrong with them but right but I mean they're definitely ones that you see on the computer and you just I mean you just wish everything was like that but yep. it's just really nice to see that genetic potential when you let cows be cows they they really can do crazy things so yeah maybe speak to a little bit of that individuality and obviously before the robots that wasn't really possible um, but when you think of genetics and high-powered cows what is do you believe the individuality of way of being able to feed her to, to her herself, milk her to herself? Do you think there's a lot of merit to that? Yeah, I think especially where you can push your really high cows, you can push them even further and you can bring your middle cows and and bring them to the next level too. You're not just feeding to one one specific number, one one specific amount of milk. You're you're really trying to to take this hundred and seventy five pound cow and push her to where she actually will reach her full potential. So in your bunk ration, you know, knowing that that cow, 82, 89, she's averaging 175 and she's given some days more and some days less, of course, than that average. What are you feeding her at the bunk to achieve if she just ate the, the ration at the bunk? So if she just ate the ration at the bunk, she's probably going to be making 85 pounds. I think that's all we're really pushing for there. Yep. And then the rest she's getting from her pellets yep. in the robot. And then obviously her dry matter intake is at a great level for her to get all that too. But the robot and her 4.7 visits that she's in there, that's supplementing her diet to allow her to go wherever she can go. Cause at that level of milk, there's no limitation on how many times she can go. 
the, the only limitation is, is to make sure that when she's there, she's going to give the amount of milk that's expected. Because this individual cow, too, she's got 5.3 refusals on average. So she's a very active cow, loves the environment, clearly, that she's living in. She's getting milked a lot. She's refusing a lot. Maybe if she, she just lay down in the pen a little bit more, she'd give even more milk. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, great start to her. Um, and do you think there will be a day where you maybe have to uh, group some cows like her in a group to maybe give her a 95-pound average bunk ration because she could give even more? Yeah, I think that's definitely some down the road when we start calving in the rest of, because right now we're 60% heifers up at this barn. And so once all those ones start to calve in, we're going to definitely need some, some more more energy there at the bunk. Yeah, exactly. 60% two-year-olds here, so some cows that, uh, yeah, you're just, you know, starting some two-year-olds, get them going because you know, like this example, when they turn into a second lactation cow, they're really going to take off, so um, they have to have a first lactation to get started. Um, and like for 8289's case, 30,000 pound two-year-old lactation is nothing to be ashamed about either. Just having that base helps her become the cow she is at, 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 as she is right now in the second lactation. Yeah, and too, as we talk about um, learnings in the first year, moving on to the, to the next, what are, what's another key point that you've learned this first year that you want to take into the next years beyond to help create efficiencies and performance? Yeah, and it kind of goes back to what we were talking about a minute ago with, with having your groups of cows. I think if we could get to where we have our heifers together and our cows together and, and really push those high cows, those later lactation cows, and then really focus in on our, our heifers and be able to watch those ones closer and help them transition into a robotic barn. Because that's, that's something that we really, if you can get them off to a good start, that's, that's something that really will, will show itself in the later lactations, like on that, that high cow. So. Yep. So when you think about when you think about the future and those two-year-olds, you want to what do you want to do with those differently? So I think if we could get them kind of individualized, get the first lactations over on their own, and and we can really focus on those and get that training process down to where where those cows are going through the robot and getting acclimated to the robotic barn, it will help later on in their lactations, their later lactations when they come back up to the robot barn. And then you can have some pens just for the later lactation or older lactation cows, so second, third, and fourth and above, where they're freshening in, like you said, two days, they're off and going, but you got a pen of those and that's a, some really big milk producing pens for you. Yep, no stress. Perfect. So let's chat, chat about another cow, um, currently averaging 188 pounds. Um, this is a cow 7635. She's in her third lactation. Uh, in her second lactation, she produced a 305 average of 36,000 pounds. Um, today, she's 47 days in milk. Again, so she's very fresh. She's got a lot, a lot to prove over the lactation. But what's interesting about her, she, her 305 predicted is 44,000. And of course, it's on her to, to achieve that. The, the environment's here for her to do it. Um, this is a unique cow as looking at the data. She's a, a different from the top cow, 82 to 89, to where her milk speed is 10.4. And what that means is she's given 10 pounds of milk per minute. And uh, her milkings is only at 3.4. So she's only milking 3.4 times a day, has an average refusal of one a day. But she's given 50 pounds of milk every time she comes in, at least. And uh, it's quite neat, because within the software of T4C, it's doing the calculations and telling these cows when they're allowed to come in. And this one clearly knows that uh, she could come in more often if she wanted, but for how fast she's able to milk out um, 3.4 times a day right now is, is, is right for her. We'd love her, maybe she would, we'd like her to come in 4.4 one more time, but right now, this stage, she's not there. The software allows it, but with the way she can unload her, her, uh, her udder, into the robot at 10.4 pounds a minute, she's, she's able to achieve a very high status in production and maybe still have some left in the tank. Her box time is seven minutes and 30 seconds, uh, about average for a cow of that stature and how fast that she, she milks out. You know, these, these, these high volume cows, it takes time to get that milk out of the udder. 
Um, I've heard so many dairymen around the country say I want to have an, uh, an average box time of six minutes or below. And of course, within that box time number, you're going to have treatment time. And with treatment time, that, 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 that's time that isn't milking. And so to realistically have a lot of those sub six minute cows, you might be challenged to have a lot of 188 pound cows because those cows need more time for that milk to come out. Um, so pretty unique thing about that 7635 be great to to clone her or flush her and have many many descendants from her because she's she's an ideal robotic cow here in her third lactation so now we talked about a couple of the cows um, but obviously two cows don't make a herd we want a lot of them and we have a lot here i mean Edgar creek with 60 percent two-year-olds within the barn we are at 95 pounds energy corrected milk today uh, a weekly average of just about 97 pounds energy corrected milk uh, with 60% two-year-olds and cows now freshening in for their second time, you know we look for the winter to be a very fruitful, fruitful time for the dairy. Um, but Austin, how as as a manager, Austin, how can you inspire more cows to get to that level? Is there some key things you see that can help make more of those animals? I think a lot of it is just making sure that that the robots are working the way they're supposed to be working and and grooming our pins to where they they want to the things that they want to do is eat, drink, milk, and sleep. And that's if we can make sure that all the cows are, are comfortable in their in their environment and, and keeping people away from them, letting cows be cows, I think that's something that, that we're really focusing on here is just, just letting cows be cows and getting away from being in those pens like we were we are in our conventional barn. Perfect. Well cool. Yeah, and I guess, you know, time will tell on some of these cows to see where they can go. If we do this a year from now, we might see that these cows even out, outshot their average uh, from what we stated they're currently slated for. And maybe there's more of them made, or maybe we learn even more. But um, I thank you, Austin, for being a part of this podcast today. I hope it's useful for everybody out there um, to learn about the super cows and what these super cows can do, because every one of you who have cattle in a large scale, you have these cows. And I think it's our job as an industry to, to figure out how we can get, get those exposed and get those genetics of those animals um, to, uh, to give us everything they have. And um, so again, thank you, Austin. Thank you. Thank you, you uh, Hegler Creek, and continued success. Thanks. You've been listening to Dairy Robot Radio, the show for dairy producers who want their questions answered by experts in dairy automation. Connect with us at DairyRobotRadio.com to listen to all episodes and learn more about the topics and guests on the show. You can also find us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and Spotify.